Hi and welcome back. So as I've alluded to in previous videos, I've now finally added a number of new supplements to my stack. And as I mentioned, when I started my journey over six years ago now, I will always keep you updated if I make any changes. So in this video, I'm going to cover what I currently take and the reasons that I take it. And then I'm going to explain what I've added and why I've added those specific compounds. Now, if you'd like more detailed information about what I currently take, then please look in the description below and specifically at the heading links. And there you'll find links to dedicated videos that go into far more detail. Now, if you do click on those links, which take you to another video in the description of that video are links to scientific studies. Now, some of the supplements I take do have large amounts of human trial data behind them, and some of them don't. But as Andrew Huberman says, just to take a step back, I know a lot of people out there, are like if there isn't a double-blind placebo-controlled trial, you know, random, random trial, then why would you ever take something? And then there are a lot of people, like David or me or a lot of people out there who think, well, if there are some mouse data or something safe, why wouldn't I try, right? Because when it comes to longevity, nobody wants to be in the control group. Now, if you follow my channel for a while, you'll know it was originally called my NMN experiment. So let's start with NMN, nicotinamide mononucleotide. I currently take 1.5 grams per day. But if I was to go with Rhonda Patrick's formula of 24 milligrams of NMN per kilo of body weight, I should be on a dose of around 1.96 grams of NMN per day. So why am I sticking to 1.5 grams a day? In short, I noticed a huge difference in my gym performance, that strength and endurance having moved from one gram to 1.5. And until I feel this starting to wane or fade away, I shall remain on 1.5 grams of NMN per day. But why do I take NMN? The only reason that we need to take NMN is to boost our NAD levels. NAD is nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide. But why do we need to boost our NAD? NAD is found in virtually all of our living cells and is essential for sustaining our life. NAD, unfortunately, declines drastically as we age, creating an energy deficit that decreases the body's ability to retain our youthful functions. NAD is biologically unstable, which makes it unsuitable for oral supplementation. Fortunately, it's easy to restore our cellular NAD by using an NAD precursor, things such as NMN or NR, which is nicotinamide riboside. This, as a precursor, converts into NAD once it's entered into our cells. So what does NAD actually do for us? Is it really that important? First of all, NAD is required for proper cellular energy utilization. Studies have shown that NAD supplementation can slow cellular aging and improve many of the metabolic defects common commonly found in the aging process, including obesity, diabetes, cardiovascular disease, and some neurodegenerative conditions. NAD may also contribute to longer telomeres. Telomeres are stretches of repetitive DNA strands that cap the ends of our chromosomes, and they steadily shorten every time a cell replicates itself. Once telomeres reach a critically short length, cell renewal virtually stops leading to accelerated aging and the death of the cell. Telomere shortening is both a marker of cellular aging and a predictor of shortened lifespan. NAD is required for the functioning of the sirtuin proteins that contribute to longevity and more specifically, maintaining the length of our telomeres. NAD promotes also the repair of our DNA. Now, even though DNA is protected by its chromosomal shelter, it is, unfortunately, highly vulnerable to damage. There are five other reasons to boost your NAD as you age. They are covered, along with these three, in far more detail if you click the link in the description below. In short, NAD also modulates immune cell signaling. It induces energy intensive enzymes. It also promotes chromosome stability. It's also a neurotransmitter and it activates the sirtuins. NAD also supports energy production similar to that of ATP. Now, next on my list of supplements is trimethylglycine or TMG. Now, although it's not specifically proven that taking NMN in supplement form will always cause the depletion of your methyl groups, I know that if I take NMN but I don't take TMG. After a few days, I do start to feel lethargic in the afternoons. Now, there's no official dosage or 
administration protocol for TMG, but the majority of the research that I've conducted has overwhelmingly recommended a 1 to 0 0.5 or a 1 to 1 ratio of TMG to NMN. So I take a 1 to 1 ratio. So for me, 1.5 grams of NMN equals 1.5 grams of TMG. Now, as well as helping to prevent methylation group depletion, TMG also has some other benefits. They are, but not restricted to, lowering homocysteine levels to improve our heart health, reducing fatigue, boosting protein production. It increases the synthesis of creatine. It may also prevent insulin resistance and may also improve the symptoms of depression. Next on my list is transresveratrol. This is an anti-inflammatory polyphenol and therefore an antioxidant. So it affects cells in your body by protecting them from damage. I take one gram of transresveratrol mixed into my high fat yogurt on the days that I don't train in the gym. And studies have shown that this is the best way to take it for longevity. It helps with brain and heart inflammation by providing a protective lining to your blood vessels. This helps prevent insult or injury. This means it could have neuroprotective qualities and help preserve memory and also brain function, as well as prevent heart disease and strokes. It may also help slow down the formation of blood clots. Next on my list is vitamin D3. Now, vitamin D is actually a hormone that our bodies make once we're exposed to sunlight. It has long been known to help the body absorb and retain calcium and phosphorus. And both of these are critical for building good, strong, healthy bones. Now, I take 5,000 international units of vitamin D3 a day, and I take 10,000 twice a week. This amount keeps me at the higher end of the sufficient range. Lab studies have shown that vitamin D can reduce cancer cell growth. It helps control infections, reduces inflammation, and it's finally been agreed that low levels of vitamin D led to less favorable outcomes when it came to COVID-19. Now, many of the body's organs and tissues have receptors for vitamin D, which suggest important roles beyond that of just our bone health. Now, with vitamin D, I also take vitamin K2. Vitamin K has got two forms, vitamin K1 and vitamin K2. I take 120 micrograms of vitamin K2 every day. Vitamin K2 plays a central role in the metabolism of calcium. That's the main mineral that's found in our bones and in our teeth. Vitamin K2 ensures that calcium is deposited in our bones and our teeth and not in our soft tissues, such as our heart and our kidneys. Now, I also take metformin. Metformin in most countries is a prescription drug and those that can't get hold of it tend to take berberine as an alternative. Now I take a thousand milligrams, one gram of metformin before my one meal a day. I take it as a preventative because my A1C was starting to get up into the top end of the pre-diabetic range. Now my doctor at the time was not too keen to prescribe it to me because it's supposed to be used, she said, to manage diabetes and not to prevent it. And she said I was still only in the pre-diabetic range. I did eventually convince her to prescribe it for me. She said, okay, only 500 milligrams a day. This didn't really do much to the numbers. So I decided to up my dose to a thousand milligrams a day. This did affect my A1C slightly, but it wasn't until I changed the timing of my dose. It did actually drop significantly. She recommended taking it at night after my last meal. I had taken berberine in the past, but again, this didn't really change any of my A1C numbers. That said, they didn't really go up either. Now, having seen a difference in my A1C numbers when I changed the time I took my metformin, I then decided to reintroduce one gram of berberine too. Now, this had a profound effect to the degree where my A1C numbers actually fell below the recommended levels. So I changed. I'm now on one gram of metformin and 500 milligrams of berberine. I will see what this does to my A1C levels the next time I get my blood test. Now, next on the list is DIM. This helps regulate the female hormone estrogen. I take 600 milligrams of DIM per day. I take 300 milligrams in the morning and 300 milligrams at night. Studies have link, linked. Studies have linked an imbalance of estrogen, either too much or too little, to an increased risk of weight gain in both men and also in women. DIM may also stimulate fat breakdown and inhibit fat cell inflammation. Now, the upper limit for estrogen measured as estradiol in men is 40. When I got mine checked the first time, it was 41.1. After two months of taking DIM, it dropped down to 30.8.
My last blood test showed it at 24.1, still well below the original 41.1. Moving on, the next supplement I'm going to talk about is hyaluronic acid. Now, I take 400 milligrams of high molecular weight hyaluronic acid per day. It's got a number of different benefits. The first one being it can speed up the wound, wound healing process. It is naturally present in our skin, but its concentrations increase when there's damage that is in need of repair. Hyaluronic acid or HA or HLA also helps wounds heal faster by regulating inflammation levels and signaling the body to build more blood vessels in the damaged area. It can also relieve some joint pain. Hyaluronic acid is also found in our joints where it helps keep the space between our bones well lubricated. Now there are five more benefits and they're all covered in the video that's linked below. In short, hyaluronic acid promotes healthier and more supple skin. It helps soothe acid reflux symptoms. It also relieves dry eye discomfort. It can preserve bone strength and it can help prevent some bladder pain. Next on the list of the supplements I take is quercetin. This is a plant flavanol from the flavonoid group of polyphenols, and that is not easy to say. I take 2,400 milligrams of quercetin on the first, second, and third of each month, and there's a link in the description below explaining why I don't take this every day. It's one of the most abundant antioxidants that are found in most balanced diets. It plays an important role in helping your body combat free radical damage, and this has been linked to some chronic diseases. It is also an FDA-approved senolytic, meaning it, like fisetin, destroys senescent or zombie cells. There are five other reasons to take hyaluronic acid, and they're all covered in a video that is linked below. Now, I also take fisetin. Like quercetin, fisetin is a flavanol that belongs to the flavonoid group of polyphenols. Again, I take 2,400 milligrams of fisetin on the first, second, and third of each month. And the same link in the description below explains why I don't take it every day. Scientists are currently exploring its ability to slow the aging process and also to extend lifespan. It, like quercetin, has senolytic effects, which means fisetin can selectively induce the death of senescent cells. Fisetin also blocks the NFKB pathway. An overactive NFKB pathway is linked to allergies, autoimmune diseases, and also some cancers. It also blocks the mTOR pathway. An overactive mTOR response is associated with cancer, diabetes, obesity, and some neurodegenerative diseases. Now, I also take 81 milligrams of aspirin each day. That's also known as baby aspirin. The daily use of baby aspirin can lower the risk of cardiovascular disease events in some people, although it is not safe for everyone. The FDA recommend only using aspirin in this way under the strict supervision of your doctor. Aspirin therapy reduces the clotting action of platelets, possibly preventing heart attacks. The Princeton Longevity Center investigated the findings of multiple studies and found that the risk of developing cancer was reduced by almost 25% after three years of taking aspirin on a daily basis. This when compared with a control group that didn't take any aspirin. And after five years, the risk of dying from cancer was reduced by 37% for those who took aspirin every day. I also take another supplement and that's called a CERT6 activator. So two in six or CERT6 is a stress response protein. I take 800 milligrams per day of this CERT6 activator. In laboratory research, CERT6 appears to function in multiple molecular pathways all related to aging, including DNA repair, telomere maintenance, glycolysis, and also inflammation reduction. CERT6 activator is a specially created all natural product derived from a specific kind of seaweed. It's the first and only one of its kind in the world and is exclusively sold by Duna Age. Each batch is scientifically tested and some batches can actually have the opposite effect. Scientists from Dr. Vera Gorbanova's lab in America conduct all the tests to make sure that it is 100% safe. Next on the list of supplements I take is magnesium. Magnesium is the fourth most abundant mineral found in our bodies and is involved in more than 600 molecular reactions. Magnesium plays a key role in each of these. Again, there's a link in the description below to more detailed videos all about magnesium. Now, I used to take 
250 milligrams of L3 and 8 magnesium. But this is one supplement I've increased my dose for. I'm now taking, again, 250 milligrams of L3 and 8. I also now take 100 milligrams of magnesium glycinate and 200 milligrams of magnesium bis glycinate. Now, next on the list is omega-3. I take 800 milligrams of EPA and I also take 600 milligrams of DHA. Omega-3 fatty acids support heart health by helping to reduce triglycerides, lowering our blood pressure and decreasing inflammation all over the body. They also play a crucial role in brain function and may help protect against cognitive decline as we age. Now, again, if you follow the channel, you know that on a Tuesday, I ruck run and not so long uh, not, not so long ago, I was plagued by a lot of muscle issues, especially in my right calf. This was when I was rock running. Now, the wonderful lady who massages my aching muscles told me I should start taking a vitamin B complex. But with nothing to lose, I thought I might as well give it a go. And it did actually work. Now, since taking this vitamin B complex that contains vitamin B1, B2, B3, B6, B9 and B12, I haven't had a single issue with muscles when I've been running. Now I also take, next up I'm on the list, 800 milligrams of Glynac, which is glycine and NAC. Glycine supports better sleep quality, which I'm all about, collagen production, and it acts as an important neurotransmitter for cognitive and metabolic health. N-acetylcysteine, that's NAC, helps replenish our body's glutathione levels. This is the body's master antioxidant, and it supports liver detoxification, respiratory health, and also immune function. Now, the next thing that I've changed is I've altered my dosing of creatine. Now, I still take five grams per day, but it's now three months on and then one month off. Creatine enhances, as we all know, muscle strength, power, and performance, especially during high-intensity exercise, making it a stable for athletic training as well as for healthy aging. It also supports brain energy metabolism and may help improve cognitive function, particularly in older adults, which is good because that's a road I'm definitely heading down now. Creatine monohydrate is one of the most scientifically studied supplements in all of the world. So please don't fall for influencers claims that say that their version is better. All creatine studies show that creatine monohydrate which also happens to be the cheapest version. So really, creatine monohydrate is all you need. And finally, I have found a multivitamin that I'm going to take every day. Please feel free to pause the video and check out the elements that it contains. Now, I certainly found it interesting to revisit the supplements and reacquaint myself, more importantly, with the reasons that I take them. Some of these I've been taking now for more than six years. Now, I'm sorry, I know it was a long video. If you did watch all video all the way through and you know what I take and why, what do you think I should add to my supplement next or my supplement stack next? And if you're looking for credible suppliers to buy these supplements from, please check out the big three, Renew by Science, Do Not Age and Pro Health Longevity. And if you do choose to buy from one of these, please feel free to use my code, MYNMN at checkout to get between 10 and 15% off. And there are links in the description below to these companies' websites.